Hello, my name is Patrick McKeown. Um, I'm from Ireland and over the next few minutes we're going to talk about the link between chronic hyperventilation and stress. It's got a long history. In 1871 this was called the Costa Syndrome or Irritable Heart and basically it was an American physician in the American Civil War. He noticed that soldiers were returning from the front line. They displayed all of these symptoms which probably nowadays is known as post-traumatic stress disorder, but it was related to chronic hyperventilation. Karen and colleagues spoke about hyperventilation. They came up with the phrase that as human beings, we need to breathe a certain amount of air. But many of us develop a habit of over-breathing, and over-breathing activates the fight or flight response that we're in this permanent state of stress. So oftentimes it is stress just as I spoke about with the cost of stress from war, causing so soldiers to breathe too much. So, but even when the soldiers came from, they returned from the front line, it took them such a long time for their breathing volume to normalize. How we breathe influences whether we're in a state of relaxation or whether we're in a state of stress. Sir Thomas Lewis, he again spoke about soldier's heart Constantine Buteyko is the work that I'm most familiar with. He spoke about the disease of deep breathing and Claude Lund, the Papert method. So it's well documented. Chronic hyperventilation for the last 150 years, well documented. In other words, it's so important that we breathe a normal volume of air. Just to give you a little bit about Dr. Buteyko, he commenced his studies in 1946 and one of his observations was during his research, he found that as patients became sicker, their breathing volume increased. So the sicker the person became, the more intense they breathe, the more they breathe through the mouth, the more the upper chest breathe. So he asked the question, was it their sickness which was causing their breathing to change? Or was their increased breathing feeding back into their sickness? And that was the link that he discovered. He also discovered that when he could bring breathing volume towards normal, many of his patients got better. And I've been working with this, you know, with people who have been stressed, people with anxiety, people with depression. And we have been working, bringing their breathing volume down, and we have significantly helped improve quality of life. Because if we can change breathing, we get better oxygen. We get better oxygen delivery to the brain. And brain cells are less excited. The individual is calmer and we activate the parasympathetic, we can activate the relaxation response. So the Buteyko method involves a measurement appraisal called a control pause, an exercise to unblock the nose, we switch to nose breathing on a permanent basis, we've got seven different breathing exercises to bring breathing volume down towards normal. And really what we're looking at is dysfunctional breathing. In terms of stress, dysfunctional breathing it doesn't have a definition, but generally it includes any disturbance to breathing, including hyperventilation or overbreathing, unexplained breathlessness, breathing pattern disorders, or irregularity of breathing. The main one that we're looking at is hyperventilation, which is breathing in excess of metabolic requirements of the body at that time. And the typical traits of it are breathing through the mouth. Do you have your mouth open? Do you have your mouth open when you're reading a book, for example? when you're watching TV, when you're walking down the street, when you're driving your car, um, when you're concentrating, when you're sleeping at night. Hearing breathing during rest. A regular sigh, for example, is another trait of dysfunctional breathing. Regular sniffing. Taking large breaths prior to talking. Yawning with big breaths. Upper chest movement. And normal breathing is four to six liters of air per minute, but we know that Many people with different complaints, they breathe too much. And this list that I look at, I took it from a book, it's called Behavioral and Psychological Approaches to Breathing Disorders. How we breathe influences the cardiovascular system. In terms of some of the symptoms would be palpitations, misbeats, tachycardia, dull or atypical chest pain, angina, for example, cold extremities, cold hands, cold feet neurological, dizziness, instability, faint feelings, etc., um, headache, paresthesia, all of these symptoms are related to breathing too much. It also affects the respiratory system, shortness of breath, irritable cough, tightness or oppression of the chest, air hunger, or the simple feeling that an inability to take a deep breath, that's related to overbreathing. 
It affects the muscular system, cramps, muscle pains, neck and shoulders, stiffness. It affects psychological, tension, anxiety, panic, phobias, agoraphobia, and allergies. So as Claude Lum said, he says overbreeding. It affects every organ and system in the body to different degrees. It affects the gastrointestinal tract, difficulty in swallowing, globus, dry mouth, dry throat, because of course if we're breathing through our mouth, we're drying the mouth, we're drying the throat, this in turn is leading to inflammation. It also contributes to heartburn, flatulence, belching, air swallowing, etc. And in general, it's weakness, exhaustion, and impaired concentration. How we breathe affects every organ or system, and that's why it's really important to get it right. And you know that during stress, you know how you breathe. Our breathing gets faster. We sigh more. We have oral breathing or mouth breathing, noticeable breathing and upper chest breathing. And oftentimes then the instruction is, the individual is stressed, so take a deep breath. But what does a deep breath involve? Usually, a deep breath is interpreted as taking this big volume of air into the lungs. But the more air we breathe, the more it's gonna keep us stuck in that permanent state of stress. To evoke the relaxation response, we need to do the opposite. Stress makes our breathing faster, so therefore we need to slow down our breath. Stress makes us sigh more, so therefore we need to, do, you know, we need to perform and practice regular breathing. Stress often makes us breathe through the mouth, therefore we need to switch to breathing through the nose. Stress increases our breathing, so therefore to activate the relaxation response, we want to do soft, gentle, quiet breathing. Stress causes upper chest breathing, so therefore we want to perform diaphragmatic breathing. So in a nutshell, good breathing is light, quiet, unnoticeable, undetectable, and through the nose. And by changing your breathing, you can activate the parasympathetic nervous system. You can get a better night's sleep, and you can significantly improve your quality of life. And I would say this is an excellent way to help counteract the effects of stress. And I'm not just talking about stress in adults, but we're also talking about stress and attention deficit and hyperactivity in children. We get sleep right and we get breathing right during the day and the individual is better able to cope with everyday demands. For further information, visit butecoclinic.com or speak directly with Dr. Mike Menigan. Thank you.